Hello lovely people and welcome back to another hand sealer video where I talk about all things to do about being a freelance graphic designer and running my own freelance graphic design business. Today I'm going to walk you through my process that I take when I manipulate typography and I'm going to show you all the different typography manipulation tools that I use in Adobe Illustrator for my logo design, poster design, brand identity design, anything where I need to manipulate any sort of typography or font. There's no one way to manipulate typography, there are a whole bunch of different tools and some designers prefer to use some tools over others. This just boils down to your personal preference. Today I'm going to be working in Adobe Illustrator which is a vector based program run by Adobe. If you want to get 30% off your Adobe subscription, check the link below in the description of this video. Adobe Illustrator is a vector-based program, which means that it's made out of points and lines that are basically created using a whole bunch of different maths. Therefore, the objects that you create in Adobe Illustrator can be scaled an infinite amount of times, big or small, and it won't lose quality, and it won't pixelate like it does on Adobe Photoshop, because Photoshop is a raster-based program. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to shrink myself down into the corner, and I'll be here walking your way through the whole process. So the first step in manipulating typography is actually having a piece of type to work with. So I'm going to type out the word typography and then I'm going to expand it or create outlines. The reason I do this is because it converts the type into an object, which means it's no longer read as a font, it is rather read as a shape that you can edit. So if you look in the panel properties, you'll see that it is no longer a font, but a shape. Now, once you've expanded your type, you need to ungroup it so that you can work with each individual letter on its own. So the first tool I'm going to show you is creating a little rectangle and using the Pathfinder tool to minus or to subtract certain shapes. And then using the pen tool to create a new shape and then using the Pathfinder again to join it all back together. This is really cool if you have a very structured shape, so you can just use blunt shapes. It won't really work for super curvy fonts. My absolute favorite tool to use when manipulating typography is the pencil tool, which is also the letter N on your keyboard. I love to use the pencil tool. You can do some really awesome shapes with it. Another thing that I love to do is create an offset path and then use my Pathfinder tool to subtract from the letter that it's on top of. So if you put your path above a certain letter and then you Pathfinder it out, it will subtract it and it will leave an outline, but it's not really an outline because it's it's been taken away. Going back into the pencil tool, pencil tool is really cool for joining letters together. So you can create a cool little shape and then use your Pathfinder tool to join and combine those letters together. The thing I like about expanding your type as well is you can create your own custom kerning in between all of your letters. Now, just to make things easier, especially with working with the pen tool, instead of me having to zoom in and out, and I'll probably feel a bit nauseous by doing that, I'm going to create two different tile workspaces. So on the left side, I can have it zoomed out and see it in real time being edited. And on the right hand side, I can have it really zoomed in up and close and personal and see every little thing that I'm doing. I'm also going to quickly add a ruler to my artboard by clicking Command R on a Mac. So I can add and subtract guides to make sure everything is on a baseline and all lined up nice and beautifully. The next tool that I love to use is the eraser tool. On a Mac, you can click Shift E as well. And this is really cool because you can go in and erase certain shapes and you can increase and decrease the size of the eraser using the plus and minus sign. Okay, so what happened here was I accidentally rotated my canvas, which I hate doing. I do it all the time accidentally, but it is very easy to fix. You go into view, you go into rotation and you say rotate view to zero. And Boom, it'll change your artboard back to the zero rotation, back to normal, problem solved. Heading back into manipulating that G, I'm using the pencil tool here just to join the two shapes together and then using the Pathfinder tool to officially join them together. And then I'm working back in with the pencil tool just to smooth out all of those lines. Like I said, the pencil tool is my absolute favorite tool. And if I can't get it to work correctly, then I'll go in with the pen tool, which is a little bit more structured where I can click and add points exactly where I need them to be. Sometimes the pen tool does the job a little bit quicker. I want to add a few more offset paths to these shapes so I can bring them in nice and tight and close and make everything look really cohesive. So we are just doing a small 1.15 millimeter offset path to the P and then I'm also going to add it to the other P quickly. So repeating the process, doing an offset path, make sure that you have put your top shape on top of the shape that you want to subtract from. So 
Again with the G, same story, exact same steps, but the G offset path on top of the O, and then I can subtract it out with the Pathfinder tool. I'm gonna to squeeze it all up nice and close together. Now this next tool I absolutely love, and it is quite a hidden gem. Not many people know how to use this tool, but it's called the Puppet Warp tool. If you click on your toolbox, you'll scroll down after you click the three dots, and you will see a little pin icon. So you're gonna click the pin and you're going to select where you want to create a pointer and then you can click on those anchor points and move them around just like you would if you had to like tack something down and then you can move the tack around basically. I'm going to use it for the R because I want to shrink the A down and have the R kind of covering the A so let's do that and then I'm going to use the pencil tool just to smooth out all those edges and make it a bit more cohesive because the only problem with the puppet board tool is sometimes the anchor points can go a little bit funky and you have to go in and smooth those out manually but overall the puppet warp tool is a very successful way of manipulating typography seamlessly. The next super easy tool that you can use is the direct selection tool which the shortcut is A on your keyboard and what that does basically is if you click on your direct selection tool and click on a point it will change it to a little blue circle where you can actually change the radius or the pointiness of a anchor point so on the a here i have just rounded off that little corner so it's not so sharp in a triangular point but rather in a little oval now for this a i want to separate these two shapes slightly i think they're a little bit too close together so i've tried to use the puppet warp tool but as you can see it's not really working and then I clicked another anchor point to anchor it down so it wouldn't move but it still wasn't working so I just went in again with the pencil tool and that worked a lot better. Then bringing the puppet warp tool in again on the R just to do some final manipulations and I'm really liking how this is looking but it obviously distorted a little bit in the base of the R so I just used my pen tool to get a nice clean cut and then used the pathfinder subtraction tool to get rid of all the things that I don't need. Now I'm just doing another comb over through the letters and smoothing everything out with the pencil tool, going back into the G and the A and just making sure all my spacing is nice and beautiful. Another thing you can do with the pencil tool is create these cool wavy lines. I like to throw those in every now and then. The next thing that we're going to do is create a shape and we're going to actually bring the O back and create a little bit of negative space in this logo. I had obviously gotten rid of the rest of the O so I just made an O out of an ellipse shape and I brought it to the front, I copied it and then I pasted it in place. I put it over the G and over the P and then I just used my Pathfinder tools to subtract them and created this cool negative space optical illusion vibe for the O. I made sure that I put the ellipse in the center of the O as well and I held down my Alt key just to move the left and right panels of the O rather than the top and the bottom. Next up I wanted to try and manipulate a little bit in the P so I created a shape for the back. Now I don't want us to get confused with these shapes so I put the O in the middle of the P as pink. So I pathfinded the background as you can see if I move the pink shape around you can see that they are two different shapes and then I used the pathfinder tool and subtracted it but it was a bit too much so I just went back and then I pathfinded it after I shrunk it a bit and it looked a lot better. I also just want to show you this I'm not going to keep it like this but if you create a stroke of something and you try and pathfinder a stroke in a solid shape when you click to connect it'll turn the whole shape into a stroke which you don't really want so to avoid that i'll show you how to do that right now but i just want to quickly go out to my direct selection and smooth out the sharp edge on the stroke but you're going to go into object and you're going to click expand just like we did in the beginning and then once you've expanded it it turns into a shape and then you can pathfinder and convert all the shapes into one shape Next up now, I am just going through the last little bits and pieces. I think it's looking really good. I am just going to quickly change that G, but I don't know if I'm going to keep that or not. Um, I also want to just quickly edit and adjust the tail of this G. So I'm using the Puppet Warp tool again, but as you can see, it's moving the whole G. So I've added a whole bunch of anchor points. And as you can see now, the top part of the G is staying still, but the tail is moving. And I decided I actually don't want to do this rounded little curve at the base of the G. So I'm just using my pen tool to go back in and edit it and make it nice and sharp and beautiful. I'm using my pencil tool now just to round out all those wobbly edges. And the last thing I'm going to do is just to extend the a sender in the H. So I'm just using a little shape to minus that out and then using my pen tool to go back in and create a new shape. So I'm removing that anchor point by using the negative sign or the minus sign on the keyboard and then my direct selection tool which is the A sign to straighten up the H as well. Now I'm just typing out typography one more time just to show you guys the difference between where we started and where we are now. 
and I think it looks really really cool. Obviously this is a crazy manipulated piece of typography and I would not submit this to anyone or give it to a client but just to show you all the different possibilities and how you can manipulate typography in a whole bunch of different ways using all sorts of different tools and methods and there's no right or wrong and there are a lot of additional ways that you can manipulate typography but these are the core easy super simple non-negotiable ways for me personally and these are also all of my personal favorite ways to manipulate typography i hope you found this video informative and you really enjoyed it and it was fun to watch and that you learned something if you found this video useful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and feel free to follow me on Instagram and TikTok to see more about my daily life as a graphic designer. If you want to learn more about graphic design then watch this video over here. It is quite a long video but it is a really intensive sort of beginner's guide to learning graphic design in 2024. I hope you have a lovely day wherever you are in the world and I'll see you soon. Bye!